live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Dell EMC World 2017. Brought to you by Dell EMC. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE live in Las Vegas for Dell EMC World 2017. Our eighth year covering EMC World now, the first year covering Dell EMC World. I'm John Furrier with my co-host this week, Paul Gillen on the blue set, two cubes, two shotgun, double barrel shotgun of content. Our next guest, who's been on theCUBE every single year, we've been in existence since 2010, the Chief Marketing Officer of Dell Technologies and Dell EMC, Jeremy Burton, formerly the CMO of EMC. And again, 2010 was your first year with EMC, now. That's right. Look, I mean, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, yeah, the makeup takes a bit longer, I got to cover up more wrinkles, but you know. Uh, you're running the show, you're on stage, your son's doing uh, some, some gigs up there. Uh, I mean, where are you now mentally? I mean, 2010, when we started, our journey, the Cube, was the first at EMC World in Boston. You just joined the company. Yeah. Now here, look where you're at. I mean, do you have the pinch me moments, like how the hell did this happen? Look how big we are. What's the, how do you feel? Yeah, it's, it's great. I mean, you, you know, I've always got this belief in tech. You, you can never plan more than a couple of years. I mean, so I, I kind of laugh a little bit at the five-year strategy or, or whatever, and I think even, you know, personally, if you're, if you're looking out maybe more than a couple of years in your career as to what you want to do, it's, you know, it, it's, it can all change. It's like the start of a, of a, of a race. Um, you know, you can have all the best plans in the world, but you don't know what's going to happen when you get around the first corner, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I knew last year when Michael asked me to take on the CMO role that, that the, the marketing team could make a difference. I mean, I'm a big believer um, about uh, a story and making sure that people understand what we're trying to do. So, uh, you know, it was a, a, for me at least, it was, a, it was a challenge and a real interesting role to take on. Certainly a big challenge. You got the, the merger going on. Obviously, bigger role, bigger company, more portfolio product. You also have a product background. You, Usually we're doing a lot of the yeah. product stuff. What's been the impact from a customer standpoint as you've been rolling out the brand of Dell Technologies, which I know is a holistic yeah. brand, but you now have a lot of brands to deal with in your portfolio. Yeah, yeah well the good news is we're bigger, we have, we have more budget, um, we can do a bigger brand campaign, and the real goal here is uh, most people when they think of Dell, they think of a PC. When they think of EMC, they think of a storage array. Dell Technologies, um, I mean, if you look at the breadth of the company now, it's, it, it really is incredible what we can do in an organization. So the brand campaign is really about redefining the company. What does Dell Technologies stand for? Well, it's about transforming your business, transforming IT, your workforce, and, and, and security. And if we can get across over the next couple of years uh, the impact that we can have in an organization, that, that's really where the win is. And you know, underneath that, obviously, we want to say, hey, look, if you're on a digital project, Pivotal is going to be lead. If it's a software-defined data center, it's VMware. So, but first and foremost, it's getting the big story of Dell Technologies and redefining how people perceive the company. Well, Jeremy, so what's the message? We've been trying to read the tea leaves here about what's the, the theme coming out of this show. What is the, the single most important message you want customers to take away? Uh, number one, uh, first and foremost, it's about, uh, look, if uh, every company's going to become a digital company, if you want to become a digital company, trust Dell Technologies for your journey. Everybody's saying that though. I mean, that's HPE's yep. uh, uh, yep. pitch now too. So why, yep. do you, why do you adopt digital transformation as a theme when yep. it's, it has become such a buzzword in the industry? Uh, are, you, well, are you trying to find a nuance there? Uh, no, because the, th the thing is, is that's where the world's going. And, and we could make up something that's ours, but the problem with that, I've never been one for saying, oh, we're just going to make up a new category. Uh, the category, people are going to become digital companies without a doubt, and I think our differentiation, and this is in the ad campaign and you see it around the show here, it's about making it real. Yeah. You, at some point you've got to realize that transformation. If you're going to go build a cloud native app with HP, good luck, you, they, they, they don't have any software. I think you said on theCUBE yeah. last year, the year before, I forget which year it was, these yeah. eight years are blurring in, theCUBE's yeah. <laughs> on its eighth year. I think you quote said, never fight fashion. Um, was right. a phrase you always say. So I do believe the digital transformation is a little and, bit boring, yeah. but it's a reality. It's well, and, and for us, we, I mean, I, I feel like our differentiation, whether it be you know, EMC or Dell, is we're a very practical company. And, and if we can't make it real, nobody can. And which is why the ad campaign only focused on customers. It was, hey, if you want to look at GE, if you want to look at Columbia Sportswear, Chitley Dairy, we had about 10 different customers. Because I think, to your point, right, it is noisy. 
how do you make it believable? You have a real customer saying, I bet on Dell Technologies and they transform my business. So we were talking on the intro about yeah. um, the transformation, and you know, I know there's a lot of hurting cash with the new merged uh, uh, companies, and you got to yeah. get everyone on stage, limited time on stage, not a lot of customers on stage. So I got I to ask you, look at, the business transformation is obviously a key yeah. message. So digital transformation really means the businesses. Right. How do you evolve from speeds and feeds culture to yeah. real business transformation? Because yeah. that's kind of what I hear you say. Yeah, that, 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 and, and that is, you know, if, if you look internally at how the company's got to transform, it's exactly that. And we created around the time we brought the companies together um, a small group uh, sales team called Dell Technologies Select. And these are folks that actually don't um, carry any one brand, they carry Dell Technologies. And they're working with 50 of our biggest, most transformative customers, and so obviously the goal here is over time you want that 50 to be 200, to be 1,000, and really you're going to grow the DNA within that group because the difficulty is that people, some companies are doing digital transformation, some companies are not even doing IT transformation, some yeah. companies are still trying to figure out the last big issue that they had, and, you know, the, the market doesn't, it's not an on-off switch. It, you know, you've got early adopters, you've got laggards and everything in between. So Dell Technology Select uh, was really geared towards engaging with transformative customers in a different way across the entire portfolio instead of storage or servers or, you know, virtualization. Can you, can you dig a little deeper on the sales model? Because yeah. you, had, you had the merger of two great sales organizations yeah. here. One enterprise focused, uh, yeah. is account focused, uh, another is channel focused and, uh, and SMB. direct and direct with SMB, yep. how, are, how are you getting them to work together or getting there, are you trying to, to, to merge those cultures or are you trying to use each for what it does best? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question because I think this is where many companies fall down when they merge or acquire even, right? Um, but so, so think of the Dell Technology Select at the very top of the pyramid, they're, they're the biggest, um, you know, most transformative projects we're engaged on and we have a set of folks who work across the portfolio. Um, beneath that, um, we have an enterprise sales team. Uh, that is predominantly made up from the EMC sales team prior to the merger. Relationship selling, big accounts, you know, there's 3,000 accounts there. Uh, Bill, Bill Scannell runs that sales team. Um, beneath that, you've got the commercial sales team and Marius Haas, who was from Dell, Marius runs that. And so we're trying to preserve the higher end relationship selling that Bill Scannell and team did and the transactional sales team that Dell had. And then even beneath that in Jeff Clark's organization, you've got consumer and small business. So what we've tried to do is, is uh, not complicate things, um, leave each area to do what they were good at, and then to the key point we made earlier, but build this very broad digital capability you know, kind of new DNA, start small and grow big, you know. You know, EMC has uh, always had good partner relations. I mean, you, they were storage and you had some swim lanes and some, you know, some stuff to partner program and all the different stuff you yeah. were involved in. The branding was phenomenal, but you took over on that. Um, but now, when I, my observation on this show, just from watching it over yeah. the years, is a whole lift in alliance and, and marketing partners. Intel, Dan, Brian on yeah. stage, obviously Dell and Intel make a lot of sense together and then that history there is there. But the alliances, Microsoft, Cisco, now a whole new set of yeah. uh, industry alliances now at the disposal. Has yeah. that uh, changed your thinking a bit? And how do you look at that? Because now that's that's not just yeah. like emerging, that's like pre-existing and exploding. No, you always <laughs> need partners, right? I mean, I think both Dell and uh, EMC never believed they could do it all themselves, right? And um, I, I think here we are, you know, together we're a much bigger company but we still need partners. I mean, Intel, we're Intel's biggest customer, right? So that makes us more relevant to them. Uh, but whereas in the past, maybe we were always thought as on, on the EMC side as an enemy of Microsoft because of VMware, yeah. now Microsoft's an alliance partner. And, and it's nice that, you know, folks like Satcher, as uh, he's taken over the company, he's made it very clear that he wants to build an ecosystem or rebuild an ecosystem. <laughs> So yeah, look, the big companies like Intel and Microsoft, I mean, Cisco, we still do $2 billion of V-Block, right? And um, as much as uh, yeah, I think, you know, we do kind of jousting between vendors at times, ultimately the customer decides who partners and who competes. And we, you know, we, we often you know, partner because the customer wants us to partner. One know. of the things I always like about interviewing you, Jeremy, because you have a, your, your toe in the water of the future. Yeah. Hey, I, mean, I heard you mention uh, yeah. VR, virtual reality, and augmented yeah. reality on stage, AR, VR. Um, AI is certainly the hottest thing in the world, deep learning and, and machine learning yeah. is getting integrated in some of the products, but as a, as a brand marketer, how are you looking at these new trends? Because they are great opportunities. You have a great show on stage, you have great entertainment, yeah. informative, colorful, yeah. but now, soon, 
as a marketer, you have to start integrating some of these awesome tools into yeah, the marketing mix. I mean, it's incredible <laughs> right now because, and, and it, one of the things I love about the, uh, the, the coming together at Dell EMC, and maybe this is not intuitively obvious, but um, a, lot of the, a lot of the client products, a lot of the VR and gaming uh, uh, business that Dell has built over the years, I mean, all the guys who come here are, are either gamers who are, or have got kids who are gamers. And so getting access to the Alienware team, they've got relationships with the Minecraft team, uh, working with the folks that uh, work on the AR and VR headsets, um, to me it's, it, it should make events like this much more engaging. I'm a big yes. believer that over time these events have got to become... And by the way, all those new startups are going to be running Dell servers potentially, yeah. so a lot of this stuff is going on, you're the, we your hands make in this, it. Yeah, we've got to make this experiential for folks, and, and a lot of the client technology has got that, uh, it grabs you, right? So uh, I'm looking forward to exploring, I mean, particularly augmented reality. Um, to, to me, that's a technology which is going to be massive in future, and um, you know, I, I, I think the way we want to present the company is, is, is not as consumer and business or client and data center. I think we've got to show folks, that, you know, the end to end. It's like if you're, a, if you're doing a service request as a, as a field service worker and you've got your augmented reality headset on, you're going to get data for the service request from a back office system. You're going to get your knowledge, I don't know, from an Isilon system but it's going to be rendered in real time in front of you as you do your work and I think, I think customer wants to see the solution. You know. we, we were talking with Peter yeah. Burris uh, in the previous segment yeah. about uh, are, we, are we going back to the future? The, the, the old IBM, you know, one throat to choke. IBM was in every market, they mm -hmm. dominated almost every market, yeah. uh, but they had the full range of, of products you could get from them, from one sales rep. Yeah. Do, are we going back to that type of model now? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes and no. They, I mean, if you want a good indication of the future, look at the past, right? And so, Infrastructure clearly is consolidating, right? Um, we believe as infrastructure consolidates, it can sustain fewer players. So you got to be the big player. So you know, in the infrastructure market, we have a consolidation play, and we're very open about that. We're going to be more efficient, more economic, and even if that market's flat, we're going to take more. Right, of it. it's still huge numbers, by but the way. But it's a huge number. And then look, there's the new cloud native world. We've got to play with Pivotal there. Uh, look at the uh, myriad of devices you're going to see in IoT. I mean, the IoT ecosystem is not a single vertically integrated stack. I mean, you've got sprinklers, you've got things that attach to cows, you've got you know, <laughs> sensors on cars. Um, so I, I think when, when one part of the tech industry starts to consolidate and you get this uh, maybe fewer vendors, another area opens up and you get this incredible ecosystem. And I'd say you know, IoT, uh, machine intelligence, the, you know, cloud native apps, that's, that's like the next frontier, and those ecosystems are thriving as the prior ecosystem consolidates. Great, awesome comment yeah. there. I think you just encapsulated. Yeah. Yeah. Well yeah, done. Really. I, the consolidation, that's a huge number, by the way. Yeah. I mean, that's massive. It's hundreds of billions of dollars. Right? Yeah. Well, in fact, it's, I mean, IDC Brilliant. would track it at about three. I, I, I yeah, in hyperconverge, that's going on right now. I mean, two yeah. years ago, yeah. that was a thriving ecosystem. Now it's all consolidating. It's consolidating yeah. because yeah. the macro category. It faster. Yeah, you, you, you've got to, um, I think in infrastructure, um, you, it, it's interesting, we don't necessarily in our business need to be the first mover, like we weren't the first mover in hyper-converged, but we can't be asleep at the wheel, number one, and we have to bring our distribution scale to bear. Once something goes to mainstream, as we proved in All Flash, and now we're proving in hyper-converged, we, we had zero revenue for VxRail a year ago, you know, today it's the market leader, that's, that's we weren't first to market with the product, but we've got distribution scale. And the reason why a lot of these small companies um, are struggling is because they spend all of their VC money, all their profits, uh, it's all spent on building a distribution channel. And so right. that's why Wall Street it. doesn't value them anymore. Yeah. Scale's a new competitive advantage, we've said yeah. it on theCUBE, we continue to say that, certainly Amazon Web Services has proven that. Scale yeah. is the new differentiator, it's the barrier yeah. to entry. Uh, great, great point there. I got to ask you about a point we, we were discussing yeah. with Peter Burris, and we were kind of riffing on this and kind of uh, making a joke at some of the vendors out there, everyone's claiming to be number one at everything. <laughs> it's like, you know, we're number one at this, we're number one, at, um, Oracle's number one, Dell's number one, HP's number one. <laughs> so the question is, what is the scoreboard? So the answer in our little opening was customers. That is the ultimate scoreboard. Yeah. How are you guys going to continue to push, because there's been some wins with the, with the combination. Yeah. That's ultimately going to be the scoreboard. Forget the market share from whatever yeah. research firm. How are you getting new customers? Are you retaining them? Are they valuing your products and services? Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a couple of things there. I mean, uh, and I think the history of Dell is pretty interesting because the, the data shows that the best way for us to get into a new customer, believe it or not, is with a PC. And it, it's our you know, probably lowest <laughs> price product. It's our maybe most frictionless sale. 
Um, and the nice thing now is once we get in there with a PC or maybe a low-end server, there's a whole mo lot more value we can bring in behind it, um, which is why a lot of our focus you know, is, is not just on product, it's distribution channel as well, because if that's working effectively, we can get that cross-sell going. And we're, we've already seen in the early days of the merger, you know, customers who've got our storage, sometimes a great tactic is to go ask the customer, hey, c can we have your server business? <laughs> and it's been amazing how many folks have come back and said, okay, because we've got relationships. And so I, I think for the next couple of years, um, you know, that, that cross-sell becomes absolutely critical for us because we get a new customer, but, but then we want to keep that customer. How do we keep them? We, we've got to solve more of the problem, and that's called cross-sell. Jeremy, know. great to have you on theCUBE. I know you're super yeah. busy. I know you got Gwen Stefani, the entertainment tonight. Um, yeah. Great attendance here at the show. Congratulations, um, CMO role, the huge organization yeah. that's Dell Technologies. Yeah. Big brand challenge, a great opportunity for you personally. So my final question, as always on yeah. theCUBE, what are your priorities for next year? When we come back and look yeah. back, what, what are you trying to do this year? So you got a lot going on. Give us, yeah. the, give us the plan. I mean, there's, uh, I'll leave the Dell Technologies thing to Michael. He, he's probably talked about that already, but marketing specifically, look, 70% um, of the content on the internet is going to be video by 2020. So as a marketer, we've got to get really great at producing high quality video content. It, it, it's the way that marketing is going to be done. So, the nice thing or the exciting thing, I think, for the marketing team is, um, hey, if you're great at doing PowerPoint or writing a white paper, you're going to be a media star in future. Uh, but <laughs> I'm a, a huge believer in the fact that you know, we've got to get great at doing uh, unique content uh, at scale. Um, and you know, that, that's how you cut through the noise and get people's attention, because the, the, the world is going to become more noisy, uh, not less. So that's one of the big priorities. And, and obviously, there's a little bit of bedding in of this new marketing model. We, we, we only closed the deal back in September, okay. so you know, we've got to get the team, the you model got, better you got a big budget, that's for sure. Yeah, but video uh, and storytelling is huge yeah. up there. That, yeah. That's the and, biggest trend. And don't forget the gaming. You brought up the gaming. Oh, yeah. CGI is coming right around the corner. We're going to have VR, AR. Oh, yeah. You're going to see a lot of that. Jeremy sure. Burton, yeah. Chief Marketing Officer of Dell Technologies, Dell EMC, uh, here on theCUBE, here at Dell, the first Dell EMC World 2017. I'm John Furrier, Peter Burris. We'll be back with more live coverage. Stay with us. Oh!